Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Black Ops Cold War DM Ultra Dark Matter Guide. In this video, I'll quickly be going over all the various weapon challenges in the game and quickly summarize the best way to go about completing them. In the video description, there will be timestamps that will help you jump right to the weapon category that you're looking for, so this video can basically be your one-stop shop for any tips and tricks you may be looking for here within Black Ops Cold War. A lot of the challenges in this game are straightforward and we're going to go through them super quickly, but others require a bit more to discussion in detail, and of course we're going to cross each bridge together as we get to them. One note before we get started is you may look at the length of this video and think, Nero, how are you doing this quickly? Well, the reason why the video is so long is because I'm breaking it up into sections for each weapon category, and there is definitely some repeat information in different sections, as light machine guns, for example, have the exact same challenges as tactical rifles, and I need to explain everything for each section in case people don't want to watch the entire video. So I'll quickly go through the repeat information as well as on offers specific tips and details for each weapon category as we go throughout the entire video itself. So once again, you can skip right away to the category that you're working on instead of having to watch the entire thing if you don't want to. With that being said, let's kick things off here with the assault rifles. You're going to find throughout most of this video that I'll be recommending just a few playlists for you to spend all of your time in. These playlists are going to be Hardcore Nuketown 24-7, Regular Nuketown 24-7, Fire Team Dirty Bomb, Combined Arms Assault, and occasionally the 3v3 face-off playlist. More on that later. When it comes to assault rifles, virtually everything can be done fastest on Hardcore Nuketown 24-7. The 300 kills challenge will passively get completed. Headshots will also go super quickly if you're actually aiming for the head, since one bullet with any of these rifles in Hardcore will secure you a kill. The 5 kill streak challenge will be a bit more difficult. It should be completed over time, though if you are struggling with this, I recommend playing normally up until you get a three kill streak and then once you're on a three kill streak then you should start holding down a sight line and camping super hard for your final two kills do that and your streaks will be finished pretty quickly though dying on a four kill streak when you just want to finish up the challenges can be super infuriating but once you're done with all the five kill streaks it's a huge weight off your chest now when it comes to the 50 long shots for assault rifles this can also be pretty easily done on hardcore nuketown overall i would say the assault rifles are one of the easiest weapon categories in the game with the exception of one challenge which we're about to discuss but when it comes to the 50 long shots 50 kills is still 50 kills it's going to take you a little bit but holding these sight lines right here on hardcore nuketown will guarantee you a long shot against your opponents pretty much every single time with my personal favorite spot being right here outside of the blue garage because you can shoot people in the yellow garage as they're walking in you can also shoot people out of the yellow window the next challenge of course is for reveal kills this can be a bit trickier to a accomplish. Basically, the only way to get credit for these kills is to kill people who are revealed by your UAV, your field mic, or your harp. The harp takes way too long to earn and usually it's not all that good. I definitely don't recommend using that, though you can, I suppose, if you're consistently getting that much score while playing in hardcore nuketown. I would like to say that in hardcore, people tend to shoot down UAVs pretty quickly, which is why I recommend your best course of action for this challenge is to run the field mic along with the gearhead perk too. The best advice I can give is to place a field mic in a hidden spot in one or both of the houses if possible because people tend not to destroy these things in hardcore if it's inconvenient for them to do so and with how big the field mic's radius is on nuketown you'll basically cover the entire house and part of the front yard and the backyard which means virtually every kill you get on an opponent that is near a house will count towards your progress for this challenge i think in one game i got really lucky with two field mics one in each house i think i got something like 40 reveal kills in a single game using this strategy so yeah field mic is definitely the way to go here make sure it's hidden be sure to run gearhead so you get access to field mics even more often and of course the uav does help but my best advice for the uav Call it in when you're in a position of advantage. I see so many people, myself included, calling in the UAV as soon as they spawn in, right? So you spawn in in the backyard, you call in your UAV, you run halfway across the map, then you die. Then you have to spawn back in, run halfway across the map again, then hopefully you get a kill, and by that point, your UAV is pretty much gone, right? You wasted the entire thing. Only call your UAV in when you're about to get a bunch of kills. Let's say you get across the map and you're about to go inside the opposing team's house, then pop your UAV. That's definitely going to help you out quite a bit. 
When it comes to your other score streaks, run basically whichever other two you prefer. The harp can help if you're actually earning it consistently, though I would like to point out that body armor is very helpful in hardcore. Next up, we have one of the most annoying and tedious challenges within Black Ops Cold War, the taking cover kills. So how this challenge works is you need to kill people who are actively next to cover with a portion of their body being hidden. This is one of the stupidest challenges in COD history, though thankfully I found a decent way of farming these kills, though honestly it isn't all that great. Your best bet, in my opinion, is to camp the windows on Hardcore Nuketown, and specifically have you be in the blue house shooting towards the yellow window. The reason for this is people sitting in the blue house window are typically not actually next to cover. They're normally just crouching in the center of the room and not actually touching any cover, and therefore the challenge will not count when you kill them. However, people who are camping in the yellow window are oftentimes close enough to the windowsill that this challenge actually counts. As much as it sucks to say, the best way to farm this challenge is to literally camp the blue house, aiming at the yellow window and praying that somebody actually shows up. You can also get cover kills against people who are crouching against the moving van, head glitching the jeep or even the car next to the blue garage, but overall I would say the best way to farm this challenge is to work on it passively while doing everything else. And and then hopefully by the time you're done doing all the other challenges for your assault rifle, you only have 20 or less of these cover kills to go for, which you can farm from camping these windows. And keep in mind, you're going for the guy who's going to be in the yellow window. You can kill him from virtually any part of the map. As long as they're in that yellow window, you will get credit for this challenge. Last but not least, we have double kills. This is basically going to happen passively with your assault rifles. The only annoying part about this challenge is having to wait until weapon level 50 to unlock it. But overall, it's pretty easy to do without making any changes to your normal playstyle. You're going to find yourself falling face first into double kills all the time on Hardcore Nuketown, so that's going to get finished pretty quickly. Follow all this advice, and before you know it, you'll be blitzing through gold camos on your way to diamond assault rifles. And just as an added bonus, here are going to be the five classes I recommend for each assault rifle while grinding through Hardcore Nuketown. Keep in mind, DLC weapons do count towards unlocking diamond weapons. For assault rifles, you only need to unlock gold camo for five different assault rifles to unlock diamond and therefore if you want to use the groza instead of something like the qbz for example that works again all you need to do is get five assault rifles gold to unlock diamond camo it does not matter which five assault rifles you choose so even the future proof this video if you're watching this video eight months from now and we have like four different dlc assault rifles you can work on those as compared to the base ones and still unlock diamond assault rifles by completing five of the different weapons Next up we have submachine guns. The challenges for this category are largely similar to assault rifles but with a few minor changes. The game modes I recommend for getting diamond submachine guns are going to be Hardcore Nuketown 24-7, regular Nuketown 24-7, as well as 3v3 face-off if you want a bit of variety. The 300 kills and 75 headshots will largely get done passively, just aim for the head when it's convenient, especially in hardcore, and you'll be just fine, especially if you build your submachine gun to feature either the task force barrel or another barrel that increases your range, as it will allow your bullets to be more effective and get less hit markers at a distance, which of course will also help with the challenge of getting 50 long shots. The same sight lines on Hardcore Nuketown for long shots apply with submachine guns as they did assault rifles, though keep in mind the range at which you need to get a kill to count for a long shot is much shorter on submachine guns as compared to assault rifles, so chances are you'll find yourself getting a number of these long shots passively without having to specifically go for them, but when you do need to specifically go for them to finish up the challenge, use these sight lines right here, they are a long shot every single time you get a kill. 
Next up, we have the reveal kills. These are basically also the same as assault rifles. Your best bet is to run UAV and field mic. You place your field mics in the houses on hardcore nuketown and pray that people don't destroy them. And with any luck, you'll be blitzing through this challenge pretty quickly, especially if you run gearhead as your perk too, as it allows you to get your field mics much more often. Next up, we have one of the most annoying challenges in the game the point blank kills. You need 50 of these things, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this for you guys. You basically need to give your opponent a colonoscopy for a point blank medal to actually show up. My best advice for this challenge is to build your submachine gun completely for damage, hip fire accuracy, as well as slide speed. A class like this is going to help you out a ton, and I definitely do not recommend going for this challenge in hardcore. Go play regular Nuketown 24-7, utilize smoke grenades to get from one side of the map to the other faster, and basically slide into your opponent's hip firing and hope that the metal actually shows up. And of course, if you're flanking and get behind your opponent, run all the way up to them. You have to barrel stuff them for this to actually count. So yeah, that's basically all you can do for point planks. Go play Nuketown town 24 7 or possibly 3v3 face off because those maps are pretty small therefore it is easier to get point planks on those maps but yeah you're going to be constantly sliding at your opponents or hopefully flanking them and then barrel stuffing them and hoping that you actually get a point blank it's super frustrating it's super time consuming but eventually you'll get it done and every time you get a point blank you're going to find yourself getting irrationally happy which is actually kind of a good feeling. Last but not least here, we have the 25 double kills. These are really easy, and especially in hardcore, you're going to complete a lot of them passively, and even though you do unlock this challenge at weapon level 50, which is obscene, you're going to spend so much time going for point blanks that this challenge is pretty much going to complete itself over time. For doing all these challenges on five submachine guns in the game, you will be awarded a diamond camo, though just like with the assault rifles, DLC weapons do indeed count. So if you want to get gold on your MAC-10 as compared to the KSP-45, for example, that's completely fine. You will still unlock diamond camo for your submachine guns. All you have to do is get gold camo on five different ones. It does not matter which five submachine guns you choose. If you do all this, you will be one step closer to unlocking Dark Matter Ultra, and here are going to be my recommended classes for each submachine gun, basically build for bullet velocity and range while mitigating recoil as much as possible to allow you to get longer range kills while playing on hardcore and nuketown, and then of course switch things up to building for damage, hip fire accuracy, and slide speed when you're going for those pesky point blanks. Next up, we have Tactical Rifles, which is probably the easiest primary weapon category to finish in this game. There are only four Tactical Rifles for you to complete, and they are all pretty much top-tier weapons given how powerful they are, so long as you're comfortable using semi-automatic weapons and burst-fire weapons as compared to the full-auto choices that we saw back in the Assault Rifle category. The recommended game modes for these weapons are Hardcore Nuketown and Regular Nuketown if you prefer that, because honestly, the Tactical Rifles are so good that you really don't need to play hard hardcore if you don't want to. They are ridiculously OP in Black Ops Cold War, probably the best overall weapon category in the game. So yeah, regular Nuketown, hardcore Nuketown, it really doesn't matter, though obviously hardcore is a bit faster because of the consistency of always having a one bullet kill. Just like with the assault rifles and submachine guns, the first few challenges are all pretty much going to be completed passively. Aim for the head and these tactical rifles will destroy pretty much everything. You'll get those headshots very quick. The five kill streaks can be annoying, but remember that these are some of the best weapons in the game so you should get these done relatively easily but if you are struggling i recommend playing the game normally as you normally would and then once you're on a three kill streak then start camping a bit, then start holding down a sight line for those final two kills. If you do that enough, over time you will blitz through those five kill streaks, and it's going to be a huge weight off your chest. Next up here we have long shots. These are super, super easy on tactical rifles. Basically, use the same sight lines I talked about before on Hardcore Nuketown. All these different sight lines right here are going to count 
for a long shot for you, whether you're going from window to window or garage to garage or garage to backyard. It really doesn't matter. I'm sure you guys have figured this all out before, but yeah, holding these sight lines right here will be perfect for getting your 50 long shots for each of the four tactical rifles. The reveal kills are the same as always. Run UAV and field mic with the gearhead perk too, and place your field mics inside both of the houses if possible on hardcore nuketown, as this makes it so you basically get credit towards this challenge for almost every kill you get while your field mic is active. And by the way, field mics do last a very long time should they not be destroyed. Just like with the assault rifle category, you need to get 50 behind cover kills with each of your tactical rifles, which is insanely frustrating. The best way to farm this, in my opinion, is to camp in the blue building, looking towards the yellow building, and killing basically anyone who shows up to the window. Remember that for this challenge to count, your opponent needs to be actively next to cover, which is why trying to spawn kill through walls does not always count. Getting wall bangs will count for the challenge, so long as your opponent is actually next to the wall itself, but oftentimes that is not the case, especially on Nuketown, so your best bet is to kill people who are in the yellow window, and also look for people crouching next to the moving van, and of course, taking out a few people that are brave enough to try to camp next to that two foot tall jeep. As always, double kills are the final challenge, and they should be completed pretty passively without making any real changes to your playstyle. Overall, tactical rifles are just like assault rifles here in Black Ops Cold War, except in a lot of ways they're a bit stronger, so therefore they're going to be even easier to use, and best yet, you only need to unlock gold camo for four tactical rifles to get diamond as compared to the five assault rifles for diamond. So yeah, overall, tactical rifles are just easier assault rifles, and once you complete them, you'll have finished another step on your journey to Dark Matter Ultra. Here are going to be my recommended classes for the tactical rifles in this game while playing on both Hardcore Nuketown and Regular Nuketown. Basically, build for fire rate as your damage and range are already insane, and then aside from that, just be sure to reduce recoil when needed and run an optical attachment that allows you to quickly pick up people camping in the windows and in the garages for easy long shots. Next up, we have the big boy guns, the LMGs. Overall, these were not nearly as painful to finish as I initially predicted. The LMGs in this game are actually pretty decent and they weren't too much of a pain to complete. And best of all, you only need to complete three of them to unlock diamond camo for the category as compared to four for the tactical rifles and five for the submachine guns and five for the assault rifles. I'll quickly cover these ones as I'm sure you guys have noticed, I've had to repeat myself quite a bit because these challenges often span across multiple categories. But since this is going to be a one-stop shop guide for Dark Matter with timestamps, people may just click right to light machine guns, for example, without having listened to the assault rifle category, so I will need to repeat myself here. So as always, I recommend playing hardcore and regular Nuketown for this category. The first few challenges are simple as ever. 300 kills and 100 headshots are basically going to complete themselves over time, so long as you aim for the head when it's convenient. You only need to aim for the head all the time, just do it when it's convenient, especially in hardcore, and over time, this challenge will basically complete itself. The five kill streaks are either going to be super easy or super difficult depending on the player. My best advice is to play normally and when you find yourself on a three kill streak then slow down, hold down line of sight, maybe camp for a bit and get those final two kills for your five kill streak. The 50 long shots are pretty easy with light machine guns as they are designed to absolutely shred people at a distance and they also have really good wall penetration so you are able to spam through the garage walls on both sides of hardcore nuketown making long shots even easier than the other weapon categories in this game. Basically, if you have an opportunity, spray through a wall, chances are you're going to get some kills, and if it's long enough, you'll get some long shots, and maybe, if you're lucky, some of those pesky cover kills. When it comes to long shots, basically the same sight lines as all the other weapon categories apply here, though remember once again the LMGs are great at shooting through walls, so tap firing through a garage towards the opposing team's spawn is a great way to get some cheeky progress towards your long shots. Reveal kills can be a bit tricky, but once again the best way to get them is to run UAV and field mic along with the gearhead perk too. 
place your field mics in the house that your opponent tends to spawn behind, and then over time, this challenge will get done pretty easily, as the field mic range is so big that it covers pretty much the entire house and then some, making virtually every kill you get in that area count towards your challenge. And also, always remember that UAVs are great. The harp can be helpful if you're actually able to unlock the harp consistently, and over time, you're going to find yourself unlocking all these reveal kills pretty quickly. Now, just like with assault rifles and tactical rifles, you need to get 50 kills on enemies that are behind cover, which is super annoying because oftentimes it's super random. To quickly summarize, for the challenge to actually count, your opponent needs to be behind cover and actively close to that cover itself. His body basically needs to be touching the cover. And so because of this, the best place to farm for these kills is to camp in the blue building, looking towards the yellow building in Hardcore Nuketown, and kill people who are behind the window. Because with how that room is laid out, if they want to look out, the yellow window they basically have to be right next to it and therefore if they're next to cover and you kill them therefore you're getting credit towards your cover kills you can also look for people that are camping behind cars camping behind the moving van camping behind the jeep so on and so forth but overall the best way to try to complete this challenge is to try to do it last Go through all your other challenges normally and hope that by the time you're done with all your other challenges for your light machine guns, you'll be pretty close to finishing up those cover kills. And then you can finish up what ones you have left by killing people who are going towards the yellow window on Nuketown. The final challenge for the light machine guns is, of course, double kills, which is super easy, especially on hardcore. And chances are you're going to get finished with this very quickly without making any changes to your normal playstyle. The only downside is, once again, you have to wait until weapon level 50 to actually unlock the challenge. But in hardcore, you're going to fall face first and then double kills most of the time. With LMGs, you can spray through walls, get double kills that way. This challenge is really not a challenge whatsoever. That pretty much does it for the light machine guns. The challenges are basically the same as assault rifles and tactical rifles, but there are only three light machine guns that you have to finish to unlock diamond so therefore this should go a lot faster than the other categories in this game here are going to be my recommended classes for light machine guns basically build into damage and long range and add what you can to your gun to improve aim down sight speed and sprint out time for those occasional close quarters engagements have patience going for those cover kills aim for the headwinds convenient camp on three kill streaks to hopefully get up to five and before you know it you'll have diamond light machine guns and be one step closer to your goal of dark Dark Matter Ultra. The final primary weapon category for Dark Matter Ultra is the Sniper Rifle category, and this category was surprisingly fun and easy to complete when you look at how simple the challenges actually are. For this weapon category, I recommend both regular Nuketown 24-7 as well as Combined Arms Assault, specifically on the map Miami. With how Combined Arms Assault works, matches on Miami tend to last anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes, and you have 12 opponents on the other team, and Miami is large enough that you can just sit in the back of the map with your sniper rifle and pick people off for those ever pesky five kill streaks. The first two challenges are easy enough, 200 kills and 50 headshots with each of the three snipers in the game. That's so simple, right? I found that randomly you get a bunch of headshots with snipers without even really going for them, so these challenges should complete themselves pretty fast. The 20 different 5 kill streaks with each of these sniper rifles can be a pain, but keep in mind if you play combined arms and just camp in the back of the map picking off stragglers and sniping other snipers, you can oftentimes get to a 5 kill streak pretty quickly. Also remember that if you hit a 10 kill streak, that counts for the challenge as well, same with a 15 kill streak. So hypothetically, if you hit a 15 kill streak with your tundra for example that is going to count as three different five kill streaks for your challenge you can of course also try to go in guns blazing with your sniper on nuketown 24 7 and try to complete your five kill streaks that way but overall this is the only challenge for any of the three snipers that is even remotely difficult the same advice for the five kill streaks basically applies with all the other weapon categories try to play normally but when you find yourself on a three kill streak maybe then hunker down and camp a bit for your final two kills if you're really struggling to get five kills 
kill streaks. Next up, we have 50 long shots with each of these sniper rifles. Unlike the other weapon categories, this one does not require Nuketown whatsoever. You can do them on Nuketown if you want, but if you're playing combined arms, most if not all of your kills are going to be long shots. So this challenge is basically going to complete itself passively just by using the sniper rifle the way that it was pretty much intended. Next up, we have the 50 kills while holding your breath, which I'm surprised is even a challenge because we basically hold our breath for every kill we get with a sniper rifle, even while we're quickscoping. So that challenge is basically a freebie. It's going to get completed super quickly. Next up, we have 50 one shot, one kills. I mean, again, it's super simple. Why can't all the weapon categories be as easy as the sniper rifles? You're going to basically complete this one over time just using the gun. And finally, we have the double kills. Now, mind you, this challenge may take you a little bit because it does require you to find two people relatively quickly and kill them. And you have to wait until weapon level 50 to even unlock the challenge. Challenge, though I would like to say the time allowed for two kills to be considered a double kill with sniper rifles is pretty generous so even though this is the final challenge that is unlocked it shouldn't be too hard even for the people who actively hate sniper rifles in the Call of Duty franchise if you're having a really hard time go to Nuketown if you're not having a hard time you should complete them relatively passively while playing in combined arms overall the sniper rifle category is pretty damn easy to complete with the exception of the Barrett 50 cal this thing is painfully bad but I found that even it is usable while playing in combined arms because again you're sitting in the far back of the map sniping people that are either on head glitches or just not paying attention so even then you can use the 50 cal pretty effectively while playing in combined arms. I recommend swapping out the terrible default scope on the 50 cal for the 4x ACOG as I found it made the gun much easier to use and speaking of which here are going to be my three recommended sniper classes for both combined arms as well as Nuketown 24-7 depending on which playlist you prefer to play play while completing your sniper rifles. With a little bit of luck with those five kill streaks, you should unlock diamond camo for your sniper rifles pretty quickly and be one step closer to finishing up Dark Matter Ultra here within Black Ops Cold War. With all the primary weapons covered, let's move on to secondaries, and to kick things off here, we have the pistols. There are only three of them to finish, and honestly, with Hardcore Nuketown 24-7, these challenges are super simple because pistols and Hardcore are pretty much as good as primary weapons, and you only have half the challenges to complete. The challenges for 150 kills and 50 headshots are simple enough. Just build your gun for damage and range, and aim for the head when it's convenient, preferably with an optical attachment. The 20 different 5 kill streaks with each pistol can be tricky as always, but honestly, I did find that playing super aggressively with the pistol in Hardcore Nuketown can be a recipe for success, as these guns can sometimes struggle at range where you have to two shot people, whereas most other people can kill you in only one shot. So, playing super aggressively, going for 5 kill streaks can actually work for you, though, as always, if you are struggling for the 5 kill streaks, go for a 3 kill streak playing normally, and then maybe camp and hold down a sight line or a doorway or something like that for your final two kills if you're struggling once again for those five kill streaks. With the pistols, you only need to get 25 long shots, and honestly, this is super simple. Just build your gun for damage and range, and camp the same hardcore Nuketown sight lines that give you long shots, right? And also keep in mind that a lot of these long shots are going to come passively because the long shot range for pistols is only 25 meters. So I recommend just playing normally, go through all your other challenges, and then if you find yourself in a situation where you're done with pretty much everything else, but you still need a few long shots, then start camping for those long shots using, again, the sight lines that you're seeing here in this video. Overall, I would say that the long shots were pretty simple to complete, and they were oftentimes one of the first challenges I got done with each of the pistols, and the next one was also pretty simple. Reveal kills. Usually they're pain in the butt, but now we only have to get 25 of them, so yeah, pretty simple. Run the UAV, run the field mic with gearhead as your perk too, place the field mics around each of the two houses on Hardcore Nuketown, and be sure to use your UAV at advantageous times, like when you're about to go into your opponent's spawn or break into their building. If you do it that way, you should blitz through these 25 
five different reveal kills in a single game, maybe two games, depending on how lucky you are and depending on how easy your lobbies are. Next up, we have 25 behind cover kills, which while annoying, is not all that bad because you only need 25 of these as compared to the 50 cover kills that the other weapon categories need. The same strategy applies for this as the other weapon categories. Camp in the blue building, aiming for the yellow window, and of course, always try to utilize people who are crouching behind the moving van, the jeep, or the car by the blue garage. While this challenge is tedious to camp for, you only need 25 cover kills with each of the pistols, which is not really all that bad. And last but not least, we have the 25 double kills, which as always should be completed passively, just playing the game normally without making any changes to your playstyle. Overall, the pistols were pleasantly easy to complete. The hardest part would be the 20 different five kill streaks, but so long as you're really in the zone and you're focused, this shouldn't take you all that long, and you're going to find yourself giddy with excitement each time you get one. Here are going to be my recommended pistol classes for finishing up Diamond here in Black Ops Cold War. In general, build for larger magazines, damage, range, and of course, aim down sight speed. I do not, and I repeat, do not recommend using dual wield in hardcore. It's super inconsistent and bad. Dual wield is obviously great in core game modes, but in hardcore, you die in one bullet, right? You can't afford to miss, and you're hip firing essentially with those dual wields. So run an optical sight, aim for the headwinds convenient, and before you know it, you're going to be done with your pistols and be that much closer to completing Dark Matter Ultra. Next up, we have shotguns, which honestly give these sniper rifles a run for their money as the easiest weapon category to complete. You only need to finish two shotguns to get diamond, which means you can choose to use a DLC shotgun like the Street Sweeper to get gold if you so choose, though honestly, the Hauer and the Spaz are easy enough to complete on their own. For this category, I highly recommend just playing Hardcore Nuketown and running a train through your opponents. Your class setup should look something like this. Basically, use Duck Bill Choke, build for range, use the hipfire accuracy body, and then use the largest magazine that you have along with the stock that gives you a ton of different movement speed bonuses. Bonuses. Basically, what we're going to be doing is mindlessly running around hardcore nuketown hip firing. These shotguns are so strong that they pretty much kill with only one pellet, so that's why you build for really inaccurate hip fire, right? You're basically just spraying and praying like you're Terry Crews in the Expendables. And if you do that, you're going to finish up the challenges for 200 kills, 50 headshots, and 50 long shots very, very quickly. The other challenges are a bit trickier. The five kill streaks can be very hit or miss with this playstyle, so if you find yourself struggling to get them, perhaps rush to your opponent's house on Hardcore Nuketown, get a few kills, and then camp to get the final two kills all the way up to your five kill streak. The same rules apply for the 25 reveal kills as all the other weapon categories. Run UAV while you're rushing around the map, and be sure to place your field mics around the houses so that kills that you get while in the houses actually count for the challenge. And of course, use the Gearhead Perk 2 to get access to more field mics more often. The next challenge is going to be a huge pain in the ass. We have to get 50 point blank kills, and to do this, you basically use the same class setup that you used before, but instead of building for range, you're now going to build for damage with the task force barrel and build for slide speed with the duster pad. Just like with the submachine gun point blanks, I recommend you switch from hardcore nuketown to regular nuketown or even 3v3 face off because 3v3 face off maps are incredibly tiny and therefore it's easier to get close to your opponents. Basically, the strategy here is to rush headfirst into your opponents and slide at them trying to blow their knees off Menendez style. And of course, if you happen to flank your opponent, don't shoot them from behind when they're far away. Run right up to them and barrel stuff them while they're not looking. That is also going to be a good source of point blank kills for the shotguns here at them Black Ops Cold War. Overall, this challenge is going to be by far the most time-consuming part of finishing up your shotguns, as you basically have to become intimately aware of your opponent's gastrointestinal tract for the point blank to actually count, but keep in mind, you'll get this done and have the joy of knowing that you'll never have to get another point blank kill again here in Black Ops Cold War, unless of course you want to get DM Ultra for DLC weapons that are released later on. The final challenge for these shotguns is going to be 25 double kills, easy peasy if you ask me, if anything, you're going to find yourself 
yourself getting more triples and quads than you do double kills while playing on Hardcore Nuketown. And just for some added cheese, you can hold a primary grenade or a secondary grenade while running around to completely remove any sprint out time with your shotguns. Here are going to be my recommended classes for the shotguns here in Black Ops Cold War. Basically, just run these classes right here while playing on Hardcore Nuketown to do the vast majority of the challenges, and then switch to these classes on regular Nuketown or 3v3 face-off for the point blanks, and before you know it, you will have diamond shotguns unlocked and be one step closer to Dark Matter Ultra. Next up, we have hands down, by far, not even close, the worst weapon category in Black Ops Cold War for getting diamond camouflage, the launchers. These things are painful for two reasons. Number one, double kills. Number B, vehicle destructions. Whoever thought it was a good idea to make it so the flak jacket allows you to survive two RPG blasts in hardcore should have their game developer privileges suspended because this is by far the worst part of actually getting dark matter. Let's go through the challenges here. First up, we have 50 eliminations. Don't worry too much about this one because later on you'll have to get 25 double kills. So that's 50 kills right there. So basically this challenge is going to slowly complete itself. Next up, we have destroy 50 equipment, score streaks, or vehicles in multiplayer. For the Sigma, this is super simple. Just run the Sigma as your secondary while working on primary guns for Dark Matter and then just shoot down anything that appears in the sky. For the RPG, however, this is going to be a bit more difficult as you basically need to run the RPG as your secondary while working on other guns, use the engineer perk, and then use your RPG to destroy field mics, gas mines, proximity mines, and stuff like that whenever they appear. This challenge for the RPG will take a bit, but at the same time, it's something you can sort of passively work on while you're working on your other weapon categories. Again, just have your RPG as your secondary, run engineer, and whenever you happen to find a field mic or maybe something like a proximity mine, pull out your RPG and blow it up, and before you know it, you will have your 50 destructions. Next up, we have a challenge for getting a bunch of two kill streaks with each of the two launchers, though I'm going to skip this one for now because later on we're going to be talking about double kills and that's basically the same idea, right? So instead, we're going to skip that challenge and move on to destroying 50 ground-based score streaks or vehicles in multiplayer as this challenge also ties into another challenge. Basically, for the Sigma, this is relatively simple as you just jump into combined arms and blow up any jet ski, snowmobile, dirt bike, boat, or tank that you happen to see. The Sigma is a lock-on, so it's a lot easier to do this challenge than the RPG, and there is also a challenge for blowing up three score streaks or vehicles in a match ten times. So again, for the Sigma, this is super simple. Just shoot down three UAVs in a game ten times and you're all done, right? But for the RPG, this is going to be painfully difficult, so basically the only way to destroy three score streaks or three vehicles in a single game with the RPG is to go play fire team dirty bomb basically to do this challenge this is what you do you spawn in you give up on winning immediately you annoy your teammates by not playing the objective whatsoever and just floating in the sky with the engineer perk on doing this you basically just wait for somebody in the lobby to jump into a vehicle and then you try to swoop in on them and blow them up with your rpg if you do this three times in a game in 10 different games you will be done with this challenge for your rpg and keep in mind if you are able to blow up six vehicles in the game using this method, it will count as two of your ten required games. So best of luck because it seems like vehicles are so hit or miss here in Black Ops Cold War. Sometimes you spend a 20 minute match floating in the sky not able to see or destroy anything, and then other times you blow up nine vehicles in a single game and complete three stages of the challenge at once. It's all a huge crapshoot and it's honestly a huge time sink, but this is probably the most consistent way of completing this challenge with the RPG, and again this also ties into the challenge of destroying 50 ground-based vehicles. So yeah, that's the only thing you can really do. You play combined arms or you play fire team and then you just hope, you pray that other players actually get inside vehicles because you're not going to really get this challenge otherwise. Virtually nobody runs the RCXD or the sentry gun in regular multiplayer. So to destroy vehicles, you have to jump into combined arms or fire team and just pray. That's the worst part. You have to hope, you have to get lucky for this to actually be completed. 
Next up, we have a challenge for destroying aerial streaks. We need 50 of them for the Sigma and 25 of them for the RPG. The Sigma is super simple. Just run it as your secondary while working on other guns and then shoot down UAVs as they appear. It's really that simple, but for the RPG, this challenge is horrendously painful. Basically, you just shoot at UAVs and pray that the RPG actually hits. There's no rhyme or reason, there's no skill involved, as the RPG pathing is completely random. Best advice, try to get underneath the UAV, lead it with your RPG, and hope that it hits. That's basically all you can do. You can also try to take down things like attack helicopters or even care package ships as they're coming in to drop off the care package. But overall, the 25 aerial destroy with the RPG is going to take you a very long time, so it's best just to run the RPG as your secondary as soon as you can so you can start working on it, and anytime a UAV pops up, just start shooting it up into the sky. Another tip I can give you guys is to try to land around helicopters and fire team dirty bomb and shoot them with your RPG, but ultimately the pathing on the RPG is so random that most of the time it's just going to come down to luck, whether or not you actually destroy an aerial streak. Now, last but not least, the challenge you guys have all been waiting for, we have have 25 double kills with both the Sigma as well as the RPG. This challenge hurt my soul and it probably aged me 20 years, but I did find a pretty decently consistent way of getting double kills with these things, though you should still fully expect for this to take you a very long time. Basically, when there is a Raid and Crossroads 24-7 playlist, which is pretty consistent, they like to give Crossroads the time in the spotlight. Usually it's Crossroads and something else as a 24-7 playlist. Whenever that's available, go into that and make sure you're playing hardcore. Now, if it's the other map, which right now it's Raid, if it's Raid, usually just back out because Crossroads is the map that you want. On Crossroads, you basically just want to continuously fire your launcher across the bridge to the other room. Now, keep in mind, both sides of this map have ammo containers that you can grab once per life to get even more ammo and therefore more shots, and you should also be building your class to use the Danger Close wildcard for extra launcher ammo to begin with, along with the scavenger perk so you can pick up more rockets as you run around. It's also worth mentioning that if you get the timing right, you can melee somebody with the launcher in your hand and have that count as a launcher kill, so in a good scenario, you can melee somebody with your launcher in your hand and then shoot your launcher at somebody else and hopefully get a kill, and if that happens, that will actually count as a double kill for your challenge progress. Now it is worth mentioning, if Hardcore Crossroads is not available, your best bet honestly is to stick to playing Hardcore Domination, as less people in that playlist run Flak Jacket as compared to Hardcore Nuketown. I know I was just saying how hard this challenge was, but occasionally the Call of Duty Gods will shine upon you and you will find a lobby like this while playing Hardcore Dom. Keep in mind, all the double kills you are seeing right now came from a single game, because for some some reason nobody in this lobby was using flag jacket and it really goes to show just how simple these challenge would be if flag jacket was not so broken in this game Overall, these challenges are incredibly tedious and painful, with the worst ones being the aerial destroys with the RPG, the three vehicle blowups in 10 different games with the RPG, and of course, the 25 double kills with both of the launchers. Don't get down though, don't get stressed, you don't have to worry about winning, don't worry about doing good, just fully expect that every single game you are going to do terribly. My best advice is to turn on a show on Netflix, or a podcast, or some music, or do, so do something to take your mind off how bad this is, and over time, if you put enough time into it, you will eventually get those double kills, and then once that's done, you are going to be much closer to unlocking Dark Matter Ultra. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we have the final weapon category here in Black Ops Cold War, which of course is the special category, which features both the combat knife as well as the thumper. Let's kick things off here by talking about the thumper, as it does have a bunch of similar challenges to the launchers, and a lot of those challenges can be completed while going for a different challenge. The very first challenge I recommend you go for on your thumper is going to be the long shots, of which you need 50 for some reason, because while you're going for these long shots, a lot of the other challenges are going to begin to complete themselves. Because the Thumper's long shot range is the same as light machine guns for some reason at 41 meters, basically the only way to consistently get these long shots is to play hardcore nuketown and shoot straight up in the sky. 
that's pretty much it. If you're looking as high as you can in the game, the arc of the thumper causes the shot to land at exactly 46 meters away, meaning that if it hits and it kills, it will be a long shot every single time. Sorry to break the video up here for a second guys, but I need to make this very clear because this is something that can actually ruin your long shots. As you guys just saw, my thumper got a kill, but it was not a long shot. Well, why is that? Well, the reason why is even though I shot it from a long range, when it landed, the distance between where the thumper landed and my character was not at long range. So when you're firing your thumper straight up in the air, make sure you don't move until they land because when they land, if you're too close to it and it gets a kill, it will not count as a long shot. Let's continue on with the Video. The only way to really do this is to play Hardcore Nuketown, be sure to use Danger Close for an extra shot in your thumper, use Scavenger for extra shots, and of course the ammo box for even more shots. Here are going to be the best spots I found to go for long shots with. Here in the backyard of the yellow house, you go right to this corner next to the fence, and you shoot over the garage right to the right of the blue house chimney. If you do this properly, it's going to land right in the backyard of the blue house, which can help you get long shots against people who are camping in the backyard for their own long shots but keep in mind flak jacket is your worst enemy look at this clip here ladies and gentlemen just look at it notice how i don't miss a single shot and i get a flak jacket hit marker almost every single time this is just pure pain, but you can indeed get long shots this way. Another method is to stand in the exact same spot as before, but this time look straight up in the air and line your thumper up with the B flag, because when you do this, all of your shots will basically land directly on the B flag itself every single time. So if you know for a fact people are on B, you can shoot your thumper, it can land there, it can sometimes save B, but more often than not, they're gonna have flag jacket, but we can't really do anything about that, right? So that is a spot where you're gonna hit people and you hope that they don't have flag jacket on because if you do hit them it will be a kill and it will be a long shot again flag jacket excluded Another spot is to stand at the bottom of the stairs behind the yellow house. You look straight up and aim towards the center of the map or even left or right of that. That's going to make it so all of your shots land basically anywhere behind the school bus and outside of the blue garage, depending on where you are aiming. So that's a good place to go for some cheeky long shots on unsuspecting enemies. On the other side of the map, you're going to want to stand behind this fence and look straight up. If you line this up with the B flag, your thumper shots will land on B 100% of the time, and if you aim slightly to the right of B, your shots are going to land next to B and sometimes kill people that are camping behind the moving van. Another spot to go is to lay prone in the blue garage and aim barely above the cover that's in front of you because these shots will go clear across the map into the yellow garage. This method is very inconsistent in my experience, but it can get you long shots as well. And always remember to be running engineer on your thumper class so you can see if the enemy team is using trophy systems. If you do see trophy systems, that's a big no-no. Those are things that are going to ruin your long shots. So if you see someone using trophy systems on the other team, stop going for long shots, pull out your primary, run up and destroy those trophy systems, and then go back to your corners and start shooting your thumper straight up in the air again. Using this method is super time consuming and super inconsistent considering how many people use flag jacket, but this is basically all we can do to finish up the long shots with any consistency. Doing this is going to complete your challenge for long shots over time, as well as your challenge for regular kills over time, and it's also going to net you a bunch of in-cover kills which you need to complete for some reason. For this challenge, I found that a lot of the in-cover kills completed themselves while I was going for long shots, but if that doesn't happen for you, a good way of actually going for those in-cover kills are to kill people who are camping in the garages and in the windows on Nuketown, or you can simply use the crossroad method for double kills. And speaking of double kills, next up let's talk about those, because just like with the Sigma and the RPG, these things are ridiculously painful, and the only way to really go for them is to do the same method I talked about in the launcher section. You basically play the raids and crossroads 24 7 playlist should that be available and spam shots across the bridge towards the other room this is the best way to go for double kills and it also gets you a number of those random in cover kills as well be sure to run engineer scavenger the ammo box and of course danger close and also utilize the free ammo boxes on this map and there is one on both sides of the bridge mind you because you can get extra shots once per life by using that ammo box just like with the launchers these double kills are going to to take absolutely forever because of how broken flag jacket is but keep at it and be sure not to back out of the match after the challenge is completed as that will reset the challenge for you the next time you sign in 
It's also worth mentioning that yes, you can melee people with a thumper in your hand and have that actually count as a thumper kill. So if you get behind people, you can melee one, then shoot the other and have that actually count as a double kill or maybe even melee both of them and have that count as a double kill. It's the same as launchers, but again, it's going to be painful how long it's going to take you to complete this challenge. Moving along here with the thumper, there is also a challenge for destroying 50 equipment, score streaks, or vehicles in multiplayer. And the best way to do this is to run the thumper as your secondary on hardcore nuketown while working on other guns and then just using the engineer perk so you can see when other people are playing down things like field mics proximity mines and gas mines and then just switching to your thumper and blowing them up the final challenge here is going to be painful as well though because just like with the other launchers you have to get three vehicle destroys in a game in 10 different games so again the best strategy for this unfortunately is just to basically go play fire team dirty bomb with the engineer perk on and float in the air for hours on end waiting on enemy players to jump on dirt bikes or snowmobiles when they do that you swoop in and you try to blow them up or alternatively you can drive the snowmobile around yourself and try to hunt down other people that are in snowmobiles but since people tend to use launchers and fire team you're gonna find yourself getting blown up quite a bit so the best way to actually go about this most of the time is just to float in the air and wait for that red engineer icon to pop up when somebody jumps into a vehicle then swoop down and try to blow them up and then basically Basically kill yourself, go back to the sky, and float up there, and wait once again. Here's going to be my recommended class for the Thumper while going for the long shots and double kills. And last but not least, moving on here, we now have the Combat Knife, the final weapon for our road to Dark Matter Ultra. The knife is pretty straightforward, honestly. You just play regular Nuketown 24-7 and use a class like this one. Pretty much all these challenges will complete themselves just by playing normally with the knife, as you don't need to go on five kill streaks like you did in previous years. Backstabs are pretty simple. Just knife them from behind, but make sure you're not holding down the knife button, because if you do that when you want to go for a backstab, it's going to trigger the animation for an execute. But then again, that's not so bad, because you also have to get 25 executions as well. But yeah, basically, play with the knife, get behind people, hopefully, and backstab 25 of them and execute 25 of them, and there are going to be two of your challenges. The 25 double kills can be tough, but the time for which the game counts two kills as a double kill is pretty generous with the knife, so if you're going into the opposing team's house on Nuketown, you should be just fine. The hardest challenge in this category is this one right here, the 50 kills against people who are disoriented by smoke, flash, or stun grenades. I found that the best way to do this is to run danger close with two smoke grenades, throw them in the center of the house, and basically just pray. And keep in mind, your opponents have to be really close to where the smoke grenade landed for the challenge to actually count. If they're towards the edge of the smoke, like they have a little bit of smoke on them, but not really, it's not going to count. There's actually a little icon that will pop up on your screen when you get a kill that will let you know if it was actually a smoke kill or not. This was by far the hardest part of getting the knife gold for me personally, Though I suppose these slide kills were also pretty annoying because just like with the point blank kills with some machine guns and shotguns, you have to get super close to your opponent while sliding at them. And for some reason here in Black Ops Cold War, if your character's body is touching another player, you basically lose all aim assist. So you're going to be sliding towards them and lose all aim assist and just knife the air next to them and look like an idiot. So basically, I would recommend going for the sliding challenge first as compared to the backstabs or the executions because if you get behind somebody and you actually have time to slide, it's much easier to slide into somebody and knife them when they're not looking at you as compared to when they're looking at you and spraying you down with their AK-74U. The final challenge that I haven't covered yet here is going to be the challenge for getting 50 kills with your knife while injured, and thankfully this one just completes itself. You don't have to go play hardcore and like hurt yourself with a stun grenade or something like that to try and complete this challenge. Just play regular Nuketown 24-7. Over time, you're going to get this done because chances are you're going to be getting a lot of kills against people that are actually looking at you. So you're running at them, you're sliding at them, they see you, they're shooting at you, you're taking damage, then you knife them, and there you go, it counts, right? You're going to be taking a lot of random damage damage on Nuketown. That's the very nature of Nuketown. So yeah, you'll get this challenge done pretty much passively. And then once you do, you will finally be done with the knife and hopefully be done with every other weapon category in the game. And now congratulations. 
firm handshakes all around, you have Dark Matter Ultra. Keep in mind, DM Ultra is super time consuming, but it feels really good once it's completed. I did my best to make this video as easy to digest as possible, but obviously I had to repeat myself quite a bit for overlapping challenges across the varying categories. But hopefully with the timestamps in the description, you guys can use this video as an easy reference guide for all the weapons here in Black Ops Cold War on your way to finishing up Dark Matter Ultra. I hope you guys all enjoyed this guide video. It definitely took a lot of time to put together. So if you did enjoy the video, consider leaving a like. Thank you all so much for listening. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.